Rob Grimes with the IFBTA, and I'm very pleased today to have Chris Libier, the Chief Strategy and Marketing Officer of Revel Systems with us, and a global industry partner. So welcome, Chris. Thanks, Rob. Glad to be here today. I need you to have your keep your strategy hat on here, because I, I get the marketing piece. We can talk about the product, and we can talk about where you're getting in the marketplace. But on the strategy side, you know, you've mentioned about uh, needing to take a look at uh, new technologies. And by the way, what I forgot to mention was pizza is a great market because they develop their own, but they also do a lot of robotics there. But you said, yes, you recognize the labor thing and, and robotics and manufacturing. So where is Revel in your strategy hat going to put its focus and investment in the future technologies? Yep. Yep. So uh, it, a big question. We, we uh, do you have three or four hours to go through uh, <laughs> uh, everything that's coming? Um, yeah, just kidding. But there, there is a lot coming. Are you going to share with it all of us? I won't tell anybody. You can just yeah, tell me. Exactly. Exactly. And we do have one customer today. I won't mention because I don't know how public they are. We have a uh, a large pizza chain that we are. We have a robot making the pizzas and sticking it in the oven, um, you know, interface to our system from the ordering solution. So uh, it's, it's real, right? We've, we've all, we've all seen it at the shows and everything, but it's, it's moving into the sites, but here's the place. Let me tell you, first of all, Rob, before we get like to, you know, future, future uh, vision, twilight zone stuff, kind of right now, what we've have been focusing on, what we're delivering and, and adding to so I think the thing that has thrown the restaurants for the loop the most is all the different channels that have just been thrust upon them because of the pandemic, right? I mean, most restaurants prior to the pandemic were one trick ponies. They were like mostly drive through or mostly sit down or whatever. Now it's totally flipped. Almost everybody is every channel, right? They're doing everything right they're doing food out the door takeout online ordering their native non-line ordering third-party online ordering you know you name it they might eat, well, you know family catering. meals catering you know i mean there's exactly. a bunch of different things right so here's the thing uh, the systems that were built before did not do a good job of dealing with that um at all even if you could ingest the orders once they got into the establishment it's you couldn't delineate and it's it's in most restaurants today it's still somewhat chaotic we've still seen even though it's improved we started with the tablet hell right where there were six tablets and some of that's been cleaned up but still the kitchen's cooking stuff for all sorts of different constituents right some of it's going long distance some of it's going to catering some of it's going to be consumed you know two tables away there's not we have put a ton of energy into thinking about each of those channels is almost here's what i tell people rob you have to think of each channel is its own business you've got to understand where am i winning and losing it and what's my profit and what's my strategy for my own takeout business and then you got to move over and go with the three pds what's my strategy how do i make money how much of it do i want or not want you got to think of it that way and in our solution We've built a capability called our order management system, and we've literally got screens using colors in, in kind of columns nice. so that you can tell across the whole business from order through the kitchen, through it going out, what's where, what to do with it, how to take care of it. You know what channel it's in. And we're starting to add intelligence to that. And by the way, I hate the AI word too. It doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's AI or not. The point is we need to start helping the restaurants. And I know people have talked about throttling a little already, but it's not as simple as just throttling. You, we need to help that restaurant run and optimize each of these businesses and maybe allow them even to make some decisions about what they want to prioritize or not, how they balance this stuff. You know, are the prices the same or not across all these things? Right. You know, historically, as these channels have come on, it's a zoo to manage all that. And back to me saying the managers of these places should not have to do a lot of interaction with the technology. The technology should do it for them in the smartest way. Maybe well, and deliver the message in a way that they understand, right? Because yes. that's part of the problem. That's why. I wouldn't use the word AI because people aren't sure exactly what it is. But if you just tell them it's actionable, yep. you know, hey, there you go. AI, actionable information. 
Yeah. That should be the term. If you want to use that with your marketing hat on, you can go ahead and do that and say, we're AI, you know, not artificial intelligence, but actionable information. And when yeah. I see that in the ad, then I'm, then I'll know. But but that's really what you're talking about. But uh, you know, I I understand the piece about multiple channels, and maybe they look at it that way. I actually try to get them to say multiple revenue centers. Uh, coming from the hotel industry, right? If you have a hotel and you got ten different restaurants, and you got the pool bar, and you got all these things and room service, those are each revenue centers, just like a drive-through is a revenue center. Your catering business, and if you can get or or maybe it's day, you know they used to look at it as day parts but if they look at it as uh you know as revenue centers then they understand they are to your words you know distinct businesses but you know i get it if you want to build that into the systems and put that logic and help them to manage by giving them the information and actionable information i'll just keep using that one but if if they uh that you do that but you know some of this is also consultative it's a relationship that you have to have with the customer. So how do you see Revel distinguishing itself in developing the relationships to really understand somebody's business and then yep. pull together the pieces that help them to do it? Yeah, and uh, I'm, thank you for asking that question, actually. Um, it is a big point of emphasis for our company. We actually have, you know, our our external um, marketing label for the business is the heart of your business. And that's super intentional. It's, it's supposed to be clever, of course, because the POS is kind of the heartbeat of what's going on. But it's also because we want to be a people-oriented business. And we are built, and this goes back to the multi-site thing and why we use you know a channel for everything smaller. We know that there's other people in the industry that are more interested in being transactional and selling a system and moving on. And you kind of have to do that in the lower part of the market because there's so many of them and, you know, you can only afford to spend so much time with them. With the multi-sites, we consider it a total partnership. We, from day one, have had a professional services group and we engage with you. And by the way, we're also, you know, not to pick on anybody, this is just part of the dynamic of how things go. We're, we're not as big as an NCR or an Oracle. And like we have an executive sponsor on our top 50 accounts. Every one of our executives has got five to eight accounts that we do a QBR with. We know the people, we meet the team and they call us when, you know, something's disconnected or they need some help. They give us a ring. So we're very engaged. We want to know what they're trying to accomplish. We learn a ton from them and we stay in lockstep with them and we get a lot of the customers that we board, you know, one of our favorites is a super hot brand, Dave's Hot Chicken, fastest growing brand in the country. But, and we have many others like that. They're the innovative growing brands because they want a partner, right? They don't want just a transaction. Like I just need to buy something and then move on. They want somebody that's going to help them get to where they're going. And sometimes they're, they haven't even made all the decisions on where they're but going. But it's really yet. a two-way street, isn't it? Because yeah. you can learn from an innovative brand as well. And we talked about the pizza segment, but like Dave's hot chicken, you know, you can learn from somebody who's an up and comer as a customer and really use that to build what's out there as well. Because the same thing that you might say about some of the uh, technology suppliers, you know, of, of which they might have something to, to say as well uh, in there, but you can say that about some of the brands, you know, the brands and, and what happens when a brand acquires somebody who is innovative, do they lose the innovation? Right. So right. That's right. You, if you have the right partnership, you're actually building your own business based on function and feature and things that they're predicting in the market. Yes. Yeah. I think I think that's exactly right. I, I mean, we all know that when two companies come together where the culture is more similar, you're gonna you're gonna get better results. But um, you know, so I think I think that part of our DNA does stand out. You can't be everywhere, but it sounds like you've made some very strategic. Uh, choices both on geography, on your distribution channel, uh, on your segments that you're focused on yeah, in order to really maybe be the best in some of those areas. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly right. Exactly right. And that's all we want to be. We want to be, you know, we want to have a great reputation with our customers. And of course, we want to grow steadily and, and have a good business, but we aren't, we aren't, we aren't trying to conquer the world, um, you know, uh, that's we're not we're not after that. So, you know, Chris Libier, the chief uh, uh, 
uh, strategy and marketing officer at Revel Systems, a global industry partner of the IFBTA. And I, I just want to thank you for your support and also spending the time with me today sharing strategy, marketing, vision, and just some chit-chat in the industry. So thank you, Chris. Right. Thanks, Rob. Uh, happy to do it. Have a great day.